This tree right here grows a fruit called carambola. You might know it as star fruit. This is one of the best performing trees on my whole farm. Us tree farmers use a technique called grafting to clone our high performing trees. Grafting allows me to go out to the tree I like and take a cutting and grow it into an adult tree just like the tree it came from. And about a month ago, just before I pruned this tree, we harvested a bunch of cuttings and grafted them. Let's go see what the result was. Behind me here, you see some grafted trees. These are sapodilla, but we're not talking about those today. But we are talking about star fruit. And that's these babies right here. So let's take a look and see if any of the grafts survived. I forgot my glasses, but I could see here that this graft succeeded because look, we've got little buds, little growth starting right there and right there. These green leaves, these were original from the cutting. Remember I showed you how we took a cutting off of the tree and we inserted the cutting into a little seedling that was grown from seed. But we don't want to let this seedling grow to maturity because number one, it'll take too long to produce fruit. And number two, we don't know what kind of fruit we're going to get, what the quality of that fruit's going to be. Now, this tree will stop growing from here up and this cutting will continue to grow. And this cutting will grow into an exact genetic replica of the tree we were just standing in front of, of the tree that gives me those big, juicy, sweet star fruit. Let's see if there's another one that succeeded. Oh, I'm really happy about this. All right, let's grab this guy here, see how he's doing. Ooh, yes, all right. So let's see here. First, let me clean it off. There's a lot of growth below the graft that I don't want. So let me get that out of the way. This branch is below the graft. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. But if we look again, I got a new shoot here above the graft. See it right here, right there. I got a new shoot right, let's see if, yeah, a new shoot right here and a new shoot right there. So there is another successful grafted star fruit tree. We do the same thing with our mangoes. For example, I'm holding in my hand a Ford variety mango. Today is May 1st. So you got May, June, July, August into September. This guy still has five more months to grow and look at the size of it already. This is bigger than a lot of other varieties when they're ripe. And in the five months this guy has yet to grow, some of these will grow to over five pounds. I'll get a ton of them over four pounds off of this tree. But if I plant the seed from this guy, I don't know if I'm going to get a tree that will give me four and five pound mangoes that I harvest in September. If I want to guarantee that result, I need to clone this tree just like I clone the star fruit. This guy here is my mulberry tree. About six years ago, I cleared the leaves and stripped the bark from a section of branch. And I wrapped that section of branch with rooting hormone and moss. I gave it about six weeks. I came out and took a peek and saw that the branch had sprouted roots. The branch on the tree actually sprouted its own roots. So I clipped the branch, stuck it in a pot, and grew it for a while until those roots flourished. And now let me show you the little tree it produced. This mulberry tree right here is an exact replica of the tree I just showed you. In fact, I'd argue that it's not even an exact replica. It's merely a continuation of the tree. I rooted the branch and we stuck it in the ground down here and it's nice and thick and grown. We planted it right here in our driveway. So whenever we get out of the car to open or close the gate, we have a nice snack waiting for us. And that's what all these are for. These are avocado seedlings and there's some mango seedlings in the back here. And when the time is right to go out and harvest cuttings, I'll go out and harvest the avocado cuttings and graft them into here. We'll harvest the mango cuttings and graft them into there. Maybe I'll take some more cuttings from that Ford tree I showed you and grow some big old five pound mangoes off of this seedling. Here's an example of a grafted tree or a cloned tree. A very successful example, I might add. Look at all the, all the mangoes growing on this tree. We're about two months away from picking season and this thing is loaded already with big juicy mangoes. And this is called a Valencia Pride variety. Now, let me show you where it was grafted. Look 
right here. See how wide and thick this part of the tree is and then how it narrows? This is actually the graft junction where this Valencia Pride uh, cutting right here was inserted into the seedling. This right here, maybe eight, seven years ago, was this little taped up area I showed you on the graph. This was a little seedling in a pot. This was a little cutting off of a tree. Someone inserted the cutting, actually George, the guy I was talking about, inserted the cutting from that Valencia pride tree into the seedling, let it grow in a shade house just like this guy here, and eventually this firm, healthy junction was created, and this Valencia pride was born. A little fruit nerd trivia, by the way. That tree I just showed you over here, this Valencia pride, right there, is the offspring of the Hayden variety. So if you remember earlier, I told you, if we plant a seed from a mango, from certain mangoes, non-polyembryonic mangoes, if we plant the seed, we don't know what we're going to get. And somebody planted a Hayden seed, and the tree that grew gave very different mangoes. I mean, this is a Valencia pride. Look, it's oblong, it's narrow, it's kind of light colored. It gets very beautiful when they're mature. Whereas the Hayden is more of a lima bean shape, and it turns this pinkish red. Like, here's a great example of a Hayden right here with this nice red color and that sort of like kidney bean shape to it, right? Well, the Valencia Pride is a seed-grown Hayden tree. So someone planted a Hayden seed, it gave a tree that gave us Valencia Pride. Someone ate the Valencia Pride, said, wow, that's really delicious, I wanna grow more of those. But he also knew if he planted the seed, he wouldn't get more Valencia Pride. So he grafted them, he cloned the trees. And I've got like, I happen to love the Valencia Pride. It's one of my top three mangoes. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, five, maybe six. I know I have five uh, Valencia Pride trees for sure. I love them. Let me just anticipate some of the comments I'm going to get. When, whenever I talk about this topic of grafting or cloning, inevitably I get these hippies that go down into the comments and are like, no way, man, it, it, it's not genetics. It, it has nothing to do with grafting. You're just ruining the earth, man. It's all about the soil and the sunlight and the love. And I hate to tell you this. I hate to burst your bubble. But if, if you put a Valencia pride tree in the ground anywhere in the world, as long as the climate supports mango cultivation, you're going to get a mango that looks and tastes exactly like this one. If you put a Ford tree in the ground, you're going to get a mango that looks and tastes exactly like this one. It has nothing to do with your soil or your worm casings or your special technique that you think you know that millions of years of farmers have not already discovered. There's also this notion that somehow this cloning is evil and it's like Western man ruining the earth or something like this. And people are always surprised to learn that modern man, western man, we, we learn these techniques from the ancients. People have been doing these techniques for thousands and thousands of years. If it wasn't for grafting, you would have never tasted a golden delicious apple, a Granny Smith apple, a Hass avocado, or any of the tropical fruit that you find so delicious. And speaking of tropical fruit, if you love to eat tropical fruit, but you live somewhere where you can't grow your own, you can buy it from us at guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. At guacfarm.com, we sell about 14 different varieties of avocado. We sell about a dozen different varieties of mango. We sell two varieties of mame. And every single one of those varieties exists to this day because of grafting, because of cloning. And if you want to look your best while you're eating that tropical fruit, get yourself a Sleepy Lizard t-shirt or a Sleepy Lizard ball cap. Now, a lot of people have been asking me questions about the finances of running a small farming operation. And I got to go in the house and figure out a way to take a boring topic like finance and turn it into something fun and interesting that people would watch. While I go do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.